The set object is one of my favorite built-in object types in JavaScript. Today I'll introduce the set object and discuss some of its use cases. The set object is a collection in which you can store unique primitive values or object references. Uniqueness is key here. No primitive value or object reference will be added multiple times. So to create a set, let's go ahead and say const my set equals new instance of set. Great. So how do we add something to the set? Well, we can simply use the myset.add method. Let's just add the number one. So how do we know that we've added one? We can use the has method to check. So let's console log here that myset has the number one. Quickly run this in our console and true. Yeah, we have the number one in our set. Okay, great. Let's add an object reference now and then check that we have that object in our set. So we can say const object equals name daffodil and my set dot add object. And let me just go ahead and comment out this console log up here. And similarly, we will console log that my set has object. When I run this in our console, yep, still true. Uh, super important to remember here that object references are compared and they do not compare uh, based on whether the keys exist or anything like that. So if I said, uh, does my set have an object with a name daffodil? This is going to end up being false, and we can prove that by running it here. And even though that uh, these objects appear identical, we know that they are different objects in memory, and these two are technically not equal to each other. So super duper important to remember that we're talking about references when it comes to objects. So what else can we do with sets? Well, we can see how many elements are in a set by using the size property. So uh, we know that we have two elements in our set, but we're going to prove it we are going to say console.log my set.size. And if I run this, yeah, we get two elements in our set. Perfect. Now, perhaps we want to delete something from our set. We can say my set.delete, and we'll just delete the number one. And that'll be great. And then we can say console.log my set has one and we just deleted it so it better not be true and run that and oh yep still logging the size so let's just do this once more yeah false so my set no longer has one great so finally one thing we might want to do is clear out our set so we can say my set dot clear we don't need to pass any arguments there and then we can say console log my set dot size let's see how big it is it should be zero and indeed there is nothing left in our set because we cleared it out perfect so what might we want to do next well so we've we're storing all this information in a set perhaps we want to be able to iterate over the set so let's create a new set we will kind of delete all this stuff that we've done so far and just say we have a new set we can pass multiple items to this set so we can say Let's turn this uh, this array here of one, two, three into a set. And then we can say my set dot for each. That's right, we can iterate over uh, with the for each method. And we can just console log, uh, let's just say element times two. And we run that. And I'll show you a little more of my console here. And of course, when we do each element times two, we get two, four, six, like we might expect. Great. So let's talk a little bit about using sets in the wild. I find the set object to be really great for keeping track of binary state associated with an object. A great example is if we're working on something like an accordion menu. Each item in the menu might be either open or closed. We can create a set called is open and track the open status of an accordion item. And we can create a toggle function that toggles the open status. So let's see what this might look like. We can say const is open equals new set. And then we can have a function for toggling our menu item. We can say menu item 
And again, this can be a, an object or maybe it is a, an ID that we're keeping track with, but we can say if is open has menu item, then we can say, let's delete the menu item else we can say is open dot add menu item. So yeah, uh, this toggle function will essentially check if our menu item is in our set. If it is, we will toggle it off. And if it is not, we will add it to our set. And then we will have a great accounting within this is open set as to what is toggled open. So uh, just a quick note on efficiency. You might be thinking that the set object seems awfully similar to arrays. There is, however, a pretty big difference that may have performance ramifications in your application. The set object is required to be implemented using hash tables or any method with hash table like efficiency. So what this means is that when you store something in an array, you might have to traverse the entire array to find that item. However, with a set, that lookup is basically instantaneous. Practically speaking, the performance will most likely be negligible in applications you're developing, but just good to remember that if you find yourself having to track a large number of items, the set with its hash table efficiency could be something that you might want to reach for.